why you shouldn't sleep on TCU this upcoming college football season. Now, TCU under Gary Patterson last season finished with a 6-4 and four record. They went 5-4 and four in the Big 12. And I think that TCU is definitely a team that a lot of people are overlooking this year because they are going to have one of the best defenses in college football this year. You have a lot of athleticism. You have a lot of experience. Like this defense is going to be really phenomenal. And when you're going against a loaded and stacked offense in Oklahoma, I definitely feel like TCU has the perfect defense to counteract how great that Oklahoma offense is going to be this year, led by Spencer Rattler, who a lot of people are predicting to be the number one overall pick in next year's 2022 NFL draft. Like TCU's defense defense is really underrated and a lot of people are talking about how good Alabama's defense is going to be how good LSU's defense could be this year but a lot of people are extremely overlooking and underrating this TCU defense they have a really nasty defensive line okay you have defensive end Mantis who had nine sacks last season you have Kari Coleman who also had three sacks last year those two guys are going to be lights out this year I think that both of those players could end up having at least 10 sacks this year you also have defensive tackles Terrell Cooper George Ellis Kenny Turner who was a UCF transfer there is a lot of talent and depth when it comes to the defensive line for TCU. And I think that this defensive line is going to be probably the best D-line in the Big 12 this year. And I know some people may disagree with that because you look at how much talent OU has, especially Iowa State as well. But I think TCU has the best D-line in the Big 12 this year. Now, linebacker, okay, I understand why people may have some reservations about the linebacker position because you did lose the linebacker Garrett Wallow, who is now gone, but you still have D. Winter, who returns. He had 65 tackles last year, two sacks, and two pass deflections. And the rest of the linebacking core should be pretty solid. We're probably going to figure out more about it during fall camp. But the front seven is really good. I like linebacker. I'm in love with the defensive line. I love the rotation. I love the depth they have at that position, especially who's projected to be the starters there but cornerback is another position okay that's pretty solid as well I think their cornerback position is going to be good enough to get the job done now the biggest concern that a lot of people are probably going to have is going to be okay JT you're selling us how good this defense is you're selling us how good the defensive line is how good the linebacker position is and corner should be solid but what about safety JT because TCU had the best safety duo in all the college football last year with more Rick and or Darius Washington, who are both in the NFL, who's going to be replacing those guys, JT? And my answer to that question is, I don't really know yet. Okay. And I also will understand for people who use that notation to say, hey, JT, I mean, safety may be a step down from what it was last year. And I definitely understand that because it's going to be hard to replace the production that you had out of Morick and or Darius Washington because those were two of the best safeties in college football and they both played on the same team. So, of course, it's going to be really hard to replace that kind of production. I definitely understand that. All right. But I definitely think that. TCU is going to be able to figure out who's going to be their two starting safeties. But even though you're going to have a drop off in production at safety, pretty much every other position on defense is going to continue to elevate. Okay. The defensive line, like I already mentioned, is going to be really good. I think they're going to be really good at getting pressure on the quarterback. Linebackers should still be really solid as well with corner. So although you do have a drop off when it comes to the safety position, everything else on the defensive side of the football should go up. So I'm really high on this TCU defense. I think this is going to be the best defense in the Big 12 this year, despite a lot of people being really high on OU's defense. Now, offense definitely should improve the offense last year I don't think was bad but it was kind of inconsistent especially when you look at the running game quarterback Max Duggan led the team in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns he had 526 rushing yards and 10 rushing TDs and when you look at Max Duggan okay this man was the 
he was the driving force behind the offense, to say the least. He threw for 1,795 passing yards, completed 60.8% of his passes, 10 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. This guy was a monster last year, and I think he's going to be poised for a breakout season. And I also think that he could be a dark horse Heisman candidate this year that a lot of people aren't talking about because you look at the production that he had last year, a lot of people weren't really talking about it. A lot of people didn't really talk about what he did on the ground. Nobody really talked about TCU all that much. So I'm really excited to see what he does this year. I definitely feel like he can have a breakout season. Now, the running back position is going to be led by Zach Evans. I think he's going to end up having a breakout season as well. He had 54 carries last year with 388 rushing yards and four touchdowns. You also have Kendra Miller. You have a lot of experience at wide receiver. You have Quentin Jones. Johnston coming back. You have Tay Barber, Darius Davis there. So there's a lot of talent in that wide receiver room for TCU. And with the improvement that this off the line should make when it comes to pass protection, they were pretty good against the run, but they weren't really all that great when it came to pass blocking. I think that's going to improve also. So with the off the line improving, that's going to elevate the pass game because now you're going to give Max more time to drop back and find his wide receivers. You're also going to increase more running lanes that are going to be open so with this off the line improving the whole entire offense is going to take a step up in production and really if TCU's offense is at least above average, then I think that this team has a really good chance of being able to be a dark horse team when it comes to being able to make it to the Big 12 championship game. Because you have Texas, who has a new coaching staff. We don't really know what to expect out of Steve Sarkeesian and company. Iowa State, a lot of people are really high on them and Oklahoma as well. But I definitely feel like TCU could easily end up being the second best team in the Big 12 this year because I like how great this defense is going to be. You have a lot of experience, a lot of athleticism. There are a lot of guys playing on this TCU defense that are probably going to be playing on Sundays as well. So I'm just really excited to see what TCU does this year, man. And this is a team that I think could end up winning eight, maybe nine games this year, possibly a New Year's Six Bowl game appearance. Okay. Now I understand that they may not have the talent that a team like OU may have or Iowa State, but I definitely feel like a lot of people are really sleeping on TCU. To you. A lot of people have been giving out their biggest sleeper teams for this year. I've been seeing Kentucky, LSU, of course, is probably going to have a bounce back here. I wouldn't really consider them to be a sleeper. You got Wisconsin. Some people have been saying NC State, but I really feel like a, not enough people are talking about how good TCU is going to be. Like, I think that this may be the biggest sleeper team in college football outside of Kentucky and Arizona State because the talent is definitely there. You definitely do have the quarterback who is going to be able to win you a good amount of games who potentially could have a breakout season where he ends up being a dark horse Heisman contender like do not sleep on Max Duggan I don't know if people call him Max Duggan or Max Dugan but I think that Max Duggan is going to have a really phenomenal season. I think he's probably going to throw for like 28 touchdowns. He's probably going to run for eight touchdowns. I don't think he's going to have as many rushing touchdowns this season as he had last year due to the fact that I think the running back position is definitely going to step up this season. So I do think that he's going to be a great QB this year. And I think a lot of people are going to end up remembering this name come around this time next year. And he's probably going to be a Heisman favorite in 2020 because he definitely has all the tools to be successful, especially with the wide receiver depth and the talent that they have there. Like a lot of people are really sleeping on TCU. And I think that this is the year that Gary Patterson and TCU get back on the national radar and have people talking about Texas Christian University again.